Tonight on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Fright. Idaho Falls is going to double in the next 25 years? That wouldn't surprise me. We've been getting in so many new folks. By 2050? Like, I wish my life was just so easy that I could go 10 under the speed limit and it wasn't a care in the world. One jares. I'd steal these out of my oh, kids' collection on absolutely <laughs> on a Halloween night. Forget the switch witch. I'm just taking them. I bet that bathroom has seen a lot of foreign butts. International butts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean butts from all over the world. IFAF. Idaho Falls Local. Independent. Alternative media. With Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Welcome new followers, viewers, subscribers, listeners. Always great to have more folks to talk to and interact with. It's good to see you here. And make sure you're telling your friends too, because we're getting really close to hitting 500 on YouTube. We'd love to hit that nice round number. There's an automatic YouTube subscription link right here in this post. And of course, longtime friends, thanks so much for being here on tonight's episode. Are we an AI podcast? I mean, everything is a simulation. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Do we really have two goth girls in town driving their own hearse? Still not enough, honestly. Not for everyone to have a goth girlfriend, so. (laughs) We're going to try a sober October beverage. Recess. It's got adaptogens, whatever that Mm -hmm. means. We're going to try recess and recis. Uh Uh-huh, that's true. Yeah, we're going to eat a full moon. Do we really want a South Expressway in Idaho Falls? Do we really need one? Where's America's cleanest bathroom? We're really close to it. And in our Rocky Mountain Horror Show segment, we visit not one, but two, two Halloween attractions. Just for you. Just here. Don't you dare. Mike, I swear. (laughs) I swear. I've already been tricked once to listen to Christmas music this season. You Mm -hmm. are not doing that to me again. Uh, when you say tricked, do you mean earlier this evening? <laughs> yes, I do. Or do you mean uh, uh, Holiday Inn from a couple of episodes ago? <laughs> no, that was fine. That okay. was one Christmas song, and the story was not uh, contingent on it being Christmas. So that one was not a Christmas movie, we concluded. We will get to Terrifier 3 later in the shoe. <laughs> yeah. But I give it five stars for the Christmas music alone. You would, you sick mofo. (laughs) But but we did have our first frost of the season. We did. Look look at this photo from Idaho Falls Snow Park. We got a light (laughs) dusting on the east foothills. Oh, wow. So they're excited. It's coming. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable. Oh, I'm sure. Can we do the Coca-Cola? Holidays are coming. (laughs) Holidays are coming. No. Uh, I want to enjoy Halloween first. All right. (laughs) That's the holiday that I want. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) Um, we had our first overnight low of 32. Yeah. So disconnect your garden hose. Thanks for that PSA, Jeff of Jeff and Greg. Mm-hmm. Blow out your sprinklers. Yep. That's a big one. I've been seeing lots of folks doing that. And it occurred to me, oops, I was so excited and I've been so excited every August to get the Old Farmer's Almanac winter yes. predictions for the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just sort of eh, la di da forgot all about it this year. <laughs> that happens. I get it. But I looked, and I think they just released them for Region 13. The oh, nice. Inner Mountain West, Utah, Colorado, Idaho. With much of the country showing drier than average okay. conditions, folks in the Western Rocky Mountains. That's us. That's us. <laughs> we'll enjoy a snowy winter. We're looking at you, Utah, Colorado, and Lake Tahoe in California. Oh. Will there be snow? Yes, precipitation and snowfall will be average or above average throughout the Mm Intermountain region. Snowiest periods, mid-November. So that's like a month away. That sucks. Early and late January and mid-March. Remember last winter, though, was so mild. I know, I know. It was so, how mild was it? (laughs) It was so mild, we were like, oh boy, the farmers are going to have a tough growing season. Right, right. Then we got one snowstorm that dumped a foot of snow, mostly in the mountains, Mm -hmm. and we had plenty of water all year long. Yeah, I mean, the river's been high all season. So they're saying... um, Winter won't be especially frigid with temperatures above normal, especially for oh. us in southern Idaho. And NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, uh-huh. agrees slightly war- slightly warmer temperatures. Don't get excited. Okay. Heavier snowfall, especially mm-hmm. in southern Idaho. It is going to be a La Nina winter. Right, right. 
Well, hey, I mean, maybe with all that extra precipitation, they should be building an ark. Yes, load us up, <laughs> two by two. Yeah, I mean, especially with how crazy things have been. Hopefully, we'll be right behind Crisp Rat and Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> right, right. Maybe we'll end up on like one of Jupiter's moons or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> things have been crazy. Have you noticed that tensions have been heightened a little bit? Sensitivities oh, yeah. <laughs> have been higher lately. I wonder what could possibly be causing that. On social media <laughs> and uh, text groups that I'm in, threads uh-huh. that I'm in. I just want to point out the, um, oh, and we have to be careful because if we mention things of this nature, uh, YouTube, Facebook will nerf us. Right, right. So we don't want to talk about social issues. Uh But in two weeks from now, there's this huge erection, let's say, (laughs) in YouTube speak. Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. (laughs) Right. So Mm -hmm. people are talking about this Mm -hmm. huge erection. Right, because why wouldn't they? It's huge. That is coming. It's huge. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Between the two South Park characters. <laughs> yes. Let's uh-huh. just call them GD and mm-hmm. TS. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Before we even get to anything else in the show, I just want to mention that. So I guess my message is be kind, be nice, play nice, yeah. be fair. Yeah. Let's... Everybody treats it like if they win, I have no faith in God anymore and the world will come to an end. <laughs> right, right. It's not like that. Let's just keep our wits on us, you know, like yeah. it's going to be okay. I think so. One way or another, there's going to be, you know, plus sides to either side. (laughs) Comments and follow-ups? Yeah, let's go for it. I don't know how to take this. We've been accused or suspected of being an AI podcast twice on TikTok now. Are we that good looking? Are we that perfect? Is the lighting (laughs) in here that great? That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wonder what they could be looking at that would make them think that it's AI. I don't know. Especially because I don't think we look like any celebrities or anything. I, you know? Yeah. Like, it's not like they would have put someone, like, um, it's not like they would have put, like, Emma Stone into an AI, AI yeah. generator and said, okay, now take her from a 10 to a 2. Yeah. And that would make me, you know? Right. <laughs> I don't think there's enough parallel there. <laughs> take Chris Pratt from Parks and Rec weight. Add 20 years, 30. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't get it. Right. Is that a compliment or an insult? I don't know, but I guess we'll take it. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe we need to start doing live shows. <laughs> that's, that's maybe what we need to do. We yeah. have been, we have been toying with the idea of going twice mm-hmm. a week. Yeah. I think it'd be cool. Instead of once a week. Okay. Uh, another comment from TikTok. Hey, isn't there a rule against planes flying supersonic? Over populated areas. Oh, okay. Mm. This was somebody responding to my theory uh-huh. that the loud booms we've been hearing, and we've seen comments from all over the place, not just Idaho, Utah, mm-hmm. and Nevada. Right. Now, since we've been talking about it. Um, yes, actually, there is a rule. There is a rule that says they can only break the sound barrier. They can only fly at supersonic speeds when flying over the ocean oh. or a training range or... Yes, Mike. Mm -hmm. When intercepting an out-of-place or unresponsive aircraft. Oh, so maybe there are just more UFOs in the sky that we don't know of that they're going after. Uh Yeah, either that or it could be something else entirely. And also, how unfair that the dolphins have to deal with that. (laughs) They deserve better. Right. Do do (laughs) supersonic booms? I mean, I'm sure the water dampens it a little bit, but it's still going to travel. Yeah, sound travels really well through water. Have right. you ever been in a pool? Oh, yeah. And take, Have you ever been in a pool? I have. <laughs> and taken like a pebble and just kind of clicked it against the, Oh. I don't know, the tile? The side? No, I you haven't can hear done it that. Everywhere in the pool. I mean, depending on the size of the pool. Interesting. You know, one of my favorite games to play in the pool is where you go underwater with someone and you try to say something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a great way to end up with water in your nose, but it is really fun. Yeah. Drea, who uh, does like Dasani mm-hmm. uh, and does listen. So I just <laughs> want to be. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. No, uh, when we were talking about a, we were talking about Spirit Halloween possibly turning into Spirit Christmas, Mm -hmm. and you saying, shouldn't there just be a store that, a brick and mortar store, Mm -hmm. that changes with each holiday? I mean, yeah, that would make sense. Drea commented, you mean like a Hallmark store? Oh. Remember Hallmark stores? I do, I do. To be fair, I mean, that's always like the greeting card store. You yeah. know, it doesn't really feel like decorations and costumes and stuff like Spirit does. It's always been more like trinkets and greeting cards. 
and didn't, you, you know, know, social media basically kill Hall- Hallmark? Really? Was it social media that did that? I think the internet in general, you know. Or online shopping. I remember we used to have a Kathy's Hallmark in the Grand Teton Mall. Yes. Uh-huh. I remember that one. It's where Coca Joe's is now, or Keiko Joe's. I don't know how to say it, but that one. And it used to be even farther down, like where Journey's is, I right. want to say. More toward what is now Dillard's. Mm-hmm. But we don't have a ha- We only have two Hallmark stores in Idaho. Crazy. There's one in Boise or Meridian. Uh-huh. And there's one inside Shaver Pharmacy in Pocatello, so I don't even know if that counts. Barely. <laughs> Once you get to Utah, though, uh, no surprise, there are six or seven. Well, I mean, you know, all the precious moments have been keeping them afloat for forever. Yeah, including <laughs> one in Logan, right? Brigham City, mm-hmm. and like five in Salt in the Salt Lake area. That's but yeah, I wonder if Hallmark should pivot and yeah, go more full spirit Halloween and keep it like. Get away from the trinkets and the cards and get a little kitschier. Because people yeah. are still decorating their homes for the Instagrams. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, I would say so. You know, though, have you seen that big trend where people are repainting Precious Moments statues? No. Yeah, it's like a really big trend. I can't, I think it's called Altered Moments or something like that. It's oh. like the, the trend name. But it's really cool. And a lot of them like to go really dark. I know I've seen like a Mortician Gomez. I've seen a uh, awesome. Seymour from Little Shop of Horrors. Correct me if I'm wrong. The Precious Moments figurines are the ones that have sort of baby-like faces. Yes. Yep. They're really big faces. That yeah. They're usually very pastel. Uh-huh. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they're painting them all goth. And- yeah, they're painting them like super goth. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw this uh, craft the other day that someone did where they ended up buying a bunch of broken uh, precious moments and just taking the heads, painting them white with blood dripping down the neck, painting the eyes black, and then putting them on a wreath. Oh, that's for Halloween. great. <laughs> it was actually pretty cool looking. I have a couple, at least a couple of people on my feed that uh, get paintings from garage sales. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, paint. Um, yeah, paint like uh, other stuff in yeah, there. Yeah, paint like an Ewok in it or something. An at at from Empire Strikes yes. Back, uh-huh. an Ewok, a ghost. Bob from Bob's Burgers. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the ghost thrift store paintings have been really big Waldo. right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I've seen those a lot. I realized after listening to that last episode, we never, I don't know what to call it, broke the seal. Oh. Meaning we never went there where we usually go with an inappropriate right. joke. <laughs> we didn't get crude. There was no F bomb. Wow. Or anything. Fuck, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and we're off. But yeah, if you want to listen to, if you want to play an episode for your grandma, number 63 is, we just had our little halos yeah. on. I don't know what happened. Wow. I don't even think I went on a rant. I'm kind of shocked because you've been really ranty lately. I have. Yeah, I dig it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I like seeing that passion. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. That's what it is. It's just passion. Yeah. Three follow-ups from our Rocky Mountain Horror Show segment yeah. uh, that we've been doing the month of October. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one is, remember the Roman tradition of placing a coin in the mouth of the deceased so uh, to pay the ferryman across the river sticks. Right, down to Hades. Down to Hades. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's sort of translated to coins on top of tombstones here in the USA. Right. Primarily after the Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. Okay, to indicate who's visited. Right. Um, we thought, wouldn't it be, so the name of the ferryman was Charon, I right. thought. Mm-hmm. You said, wouldn't it be funny if it was a total Karen? <laughs> right. It is pronounced Karen. No, it's not. The ferryman is pronounced Karen. <laughs> so, no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you think that they have the, like, can I talk to your manager haircut? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, the really big sunglasses. Can you yeah. imagine? Uh-huh. Can you imagine a Karen pulling up at the River Sticks being like, get in, loser. We're going to Hades. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was interesting. That's the hilarious. A total Karen. Oh, my God. I love that. <laughs> also, the man behind the flamethrower pipe organ uh-huh. at the Haunted River in Manan. Uh-huh. Uh, doxed himself, kind of. His name is Jonathan <laughs> Elkins of Elkins Engineering. He, oh, that's cool. He said, hey, I just uh, wanted you to know I, I put that thing together. That's so rad. I totally stalked him, and and uh, we're friends on Facebook now. Uh-huh. I checked out his Instagram, and I want to show you uh, this. Here's Carol of the Bells, played by a guy named, going to butcher your name, sorry, buddy, Javon Gurney. Okay. And he's playing it on the pipe organ with the flames. <laughs> so cool. That is super cool. Yeah, right. yeah, that's amazing. 
And I guess it's his flaming flamethrower pipe organ is patent pending. Okay, good for him. I would hope so. I dug. A, I, I scrolled a little farther in his Instagram. Well, also, it's kind of wacky that that doesn't already exist. You know? It right? Yeah. It, I mean, like it feels so like right. <laughs> it feels so right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right. Here's, I guess, his old music teacher. Okay. Playing a little bit on the organ as well. Check this out. Oh, that's cool. That, of course, is Franz Liszt, Hungarian Rhapsody, number two, a piece made famous by both Donald and Daffy Duck at the Ink and Paint Club. <laughs> right. Uh, in the 1988 classic Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Such a good movie, by the way. Wow. Um, also, I have a phantom mask. Do you think he'd let us play with it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there, that's Box Tocata and Fugue. You can do. Yeah, dun, 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 dun. yeah there we go. Dun, 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 that's dun, all I want. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> How about it, Jonathan Elkins? <laughs> Mad props to you, bro, and Elkins Engineering, and that is why you are IFAF this week. <laughs> Chris Pie 5, Which... 21 Finger Gun Salute, you. and Chef's Kiss. To you. Just amazing. And your baller organ, dude. That's yeah. cool. Talent and innovation. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, bro. And finally, we've already brought goths up once this segment. Yes. Uh, I was messaged by a uh, listener. Thank you so much. You know who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, uh, hey, Maddie Danger indeed lives in Idaho Falls. <laughs> okay. This is just going to keep getting better for the next two or three facts here. Okay. So uh, she does have a huge following on TikTok is probably where you want to check her out. Right, right. I mean, TikTok's where all the cool kids are. 600,000 plus. Oh, wow. Followers on TikTok. Oh, wow. Okay. She is a self-described goth, but I would almost say she's more like a, um, I don't say more. I want to respect how you identify. If you <laughs> identify as a goth, Maddie, that's fine. She's definitely got some 80s hair metal okay. vibes going on. Maybe a little punk flavoring? Yes. Okay, I dig that. Little goth, little punk, 80s hair metal. Like her most listened to artist is Dio, for crying out loud. Okay, that's rad. She loves horror movies on VHS. Uh-huh. Uh, so I found a couple of interviews with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the interviews is with a photographer here in town, Jay Summer. Love, what's up? Oh, fun. Okay. But here's what she revealed about Maddie. First of all, she drives a 2003 Cadillac DeVille hearse. Okay. Hilarious. Love that. And I guess she, uh, this is coming from somebody who knows her, she drives it to work mm -hmm. every day. Well, I mean, yeah, why wouldn't you? And she shows up in full costume and makeup every day. I mean, she's it's just a computer her fit. networker. <laughs> person. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Now, that being said, she is not the goth I was talking about. Okay, because I, th okay, I thought yeah. when you were talking about a, f a woman who owned a hearse and drove it around, Very and I was talking <laughs> about, oh, I think we have a local goth YouTuber. I uh -huh. thought we, they were the same person, but you say no. No, no we have two of them in town, at least. Okay. Um, I don't want to give her name because I haven't gotten permission, but uh, we'll call her Liz. Okay. Yeah, all but right. yeah, she's someone who I've actually met who also drives a hearse around town <laughs> all the time. I actually, I so I, you know, wanted to double check my facts and make sure that she hadn't like changed her name for Instagram or something because mm -hmm. I was like, this doesn't look like the same person. But I double checked; they are two different people. Um, and in her profile pic, in her well, on her banner pic, it shows her hearse. Okay. Yeah. Maddie got married in 2022, and I recognize the backdrop. It is, uh, they got married inside, uh, and they tr traded guitars oh, that's instead sweet. of rings. So okay, she's wearing, cute. I think I've got this right. She was wearing white. He was wearing black. She had yeah. a white guitar. He had a black guitar, and then they traded. That's cool. It was visually stunning, and it happened inside Trinity United Methodist Church. Oh, I love that. That I was at last Christmas doing right. the little Snake River Radio Players Which, thing. Which, to be fair, is a beautiful church. I can see why they'd choose it. Beautiful. And he, oh, and you and Maddie have something very much in common, I believe. She really loves Dark Shadows. I love Dark Shadows. Yeah. Okay, that's fun. I, yep, Maybe you two I should that. talk. I feel like she'd really dig my Barnabas picture in my house. I think so. Yeah, it's super cool. It's like an actual old newspaper of it. It's pretty baller. 
Well, let's get it started in here. As we mentioned last week, we are celebrating Sober October. Yes. And my buddy Brad uh, said something publicly on Facebook that I was like, oh, yeah, I've been thinking that too. Right, yeah. Do you ever have an idea kicking back in the back of your head in the back burner? Mm -hmm. And then you see somebody else uh, have it too. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I should take action on that. Like suddenly Mm -hmm. your idea is validated. Matter of fact. And you take action. That actually also happened to me with this same thing. Oh. Because I'd also been kicking it around in my head. And then you came to me and you said, hey, should we do this? And I said, yep, we sure should. (laughs) What we're talking about is there's a whole slew of these new beverages that are supposed to give you some sort of, these are supposed to be relaxation beverages. This is a brand called Recess. It's the hottest and highest rated one on Amazon that I could find. And this (laughs) this prematurely burped. I know, I couldn't believe it. (laughs) This one's called Recess. And um, this particular variety pack contains Mm -hmm. grapefruit tangerine, which is what I'm going to have. Right. Mm-hmm. Lime citrus, raspberry mm-hmm. lemon, and then what you're going to have, strawberry rose. Because of course I am. <laughs> so let's let's uh, let's sober October this up here. Yeah, I like it. All right. And and we'll let you know, twenty calories each. That's not bad. It's just that's you know, not bad. Adaptogen infused sparkling water, basically. Okay. So the second, so first it's um filtered water. The second ingredient in this is a. Strawberry rose tea infusion. So, so it's got a tea infusion. Okay. And I'm, I don't even know what adaptogens are. I know what nootropics are. That's nice. And they're not scary. Uh, this is tasty AF. This is a great flavor. Yeah. Well, and this tastes like real strawberries, not the artificial strawberry flavor, mm-hmm. you know, which is really nice. Remember a couple of Christmases ago where Coke came out with a cinnamon Coke? Mm-hmm. It was a natural cinnamon. It wasn't hot tamale candy cinnamon. Right, right. It was like a, um, it was a, a stewed cinnamon stick. Ooh. Like you'd have in some wassail mm, type that's cinnamon. That's nice. Like I wonder if there's natural. some way to sort of um, recreate that. Also, do you want to trade these for a sec? Yeah, let me try yours. Yeah. Okay. We sometimes trade beverages just to prove we're in the same room. Five feet apart. Ooh. That's nice. I like mine better, but this is really nice. Is it just me? Maybe because I switched from the highly acidic grapefruit tangerine. Mm -hmm. Um, But does your strawberry rose kind of have a little creamy taste to it? Like like the polar orange or the LaCroix Mm. key lime? I think it does, actually. Yeah. It's got a little hint of vanilla. Yeah, which I really like. It could be the rose, too, that you're getting that nice floral sort of. All right. Flavor, yeah. Well, we'll just sip on these throughout the show, and if we're loopy by the end, it's either because it's really, really late at night, <laughs> because we're just getting back from Terrifier 3. Yes. <laughs> or there's something in these. They're, no, they're not supposed to make you loopy at all. They're just relaxation. What does it say? It says calm, cool, collected. All right. We'll be calm, cool, and collected. Yeah. After this. That'll be nice. I wish. <laughs> We're almost never that way. Right. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Okay. I wish I had a straw so I didn't have to worry about my hat falling off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? It, it's um, How are you keeping that up, by the way? Uh, paper towels. Okay. Yep. I often basically get asked a, the same thing. No, I'm yeah, ba- Basically a paper Viagra. <laughs> okay. It's highly effective. Mm-hmm. I know we're going to cut some stuff out of this show. Right. Because we just have so much when it comes to the Rocky Mountain Horror Show. <laughs> so I just want to, we'll, we'll turbo through a few of these. Love it. Before the break. Let's. I'm so excited that the FTC announces click to cancel. That's right. They have a new rule that simply states, hey, companies, you can no longer take advantages, advantage of consumers by making it difficult to cancel your product or service. Oh, oh, good. Think, I don't know, gym memberships. Yep. It should be just as easy as clicking. I shouldn't have to send a physical letter saying, please, sir, may I be out of my contract? Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Subscriptions. Mm -hmm. And and I've talked before about how I am an avid fan of capitalism. What I am not a fan of is late stage capitalism where it's okay for companies to take advantage of consumers. Right. At the end of the day, the people should be paramount. Can you imagine signing up for a subscription and having to have, I don't know, your spouse's signature on the form that you download Mm -hmm. from the website and then have to fax? Oh, 
Yeah. Um, we actually don't have facts where I live. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so glad to see that predatory behavior squelched by the government. I agree. About time. That's fantastic. Next up, I hope forced, uh, forced uh, arbitration clauses mm-hmm. uh, deleted from terms of service agreements. Looking at you, Disney mm-hmm. and Uber. Yeah, wow. Okay. Uh, there's a uh, proposed South Expressway in Idaho Falls. Oh. So if you're looking at a map of Idaho Falls from north to south, it's it would be in between 65th South. That's exit 113. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dads or loves truck stop. Right, uh-huh. And that's where you go to Wild Adventure Corn Maze. Mm -hmm. And it would be in between that and 81st South. Okay, cool. Hundreds of residents showed up to the meeting to protest. And I just want to say, I totally get that. I respect that. Can you imagine having bought a few acres out there thinking you're going to have some nice country living? Right, right. And then this happens? Yeah, that'd be pretty upsetting. That's unfortunate. Um, It did kind of happen to Sunnyside residents, though, especially Mm -hmm. ones in between homes and rolling debt. Right. They yep. had these, I remember back in the 80s. I know. It was such a pretty little neighborhood and stuff. And you could watch the sunset mm-hmm. in the West from your home that was actually facing Sunnyside. And that is why there are now huge retaining walls and sound barrier walls yep. on Sunnyside. So it says Idaho Falls is going to double in the next 25 years. That wouldn't surprise me. We, we've been getting in so many new folks. By 2050. So we're going to need some sort of express route from east mm-hmm. to west in particular north to south we've got right. i-15 mm-hmm. we've got the yellowstone highway but east to west we're lacking yeah yeah i totally agree with that so we're gonna need something well, and also can i just talk about how slow some people are driving lately i feel like every day <laughs> i've run into someone who's going at least 10 under the, the speed limit i feel like every day i see a post on the life in idaho falls facebook group yeah. <laughs> that that calls out some driver for doing something right right but man, it's like, you know, honestly, I wish I didn't have anywhere to go like that. Like, I wish my life was just so easy that I could go 10 under the speed limit and it wasn't a care in the world. One <laughs> cares. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but I guess, did you know we have a Bonneville Metropolitan Planning Organization? I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is very bubbly. <laughs> they, they said, everybody's saying we should have done this 20 years ago. I mean, yeah, we should have, but. We know that. Yeah. Uh, that's why we're doing something now. It's kind of like planting a tree. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. <laughs> You're just nailing it tonight. Thanks. Uh, by the way, did you know that uh, we are very close to a uh, a very important restroom in the United States? Oh, really? The, the Maverick by the airport in Salt Lake City, uh-huh. the Salt Lake City International Airport, mm-hmm. that uh, most... People from Idaho Falls are at eh, two or three times a year, right? I don't know, mm-hmm. depending on how much you travel or yeah. pick someone up who has traveled. Mm-hmm. Um, they, The Maverick has has gotten the winner of Cintas, their 2024 America Best Restroom Contest. Oh, wow. Okay. So if you want to tinkle in a really clean <laughs> restroom. Yeah, that's the one to get go yourself to. to the Maverick. Man, their employees must be proud. Mm-hmm. I hope they're getting paid well enough. To justify that. In, in my <laughs> real estate career, I um, I probably stop at a Maverick once every other day. Oh, yeah. How can you not? Yeah. But yeah, man. And you know what? I bet that bathroom has seen a lot of foreign butts. <laughs> <laughs> International butts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, butts from all over the world. Okay, Tina. I think, I think that's pretty. <laughs> I just think that's interesting. I think that's impressive. And I love that that's probably a lot of international people's First time in an American restroom, or maybe second or third, you know, and I, it's nice that they get to go in a nice yes. clean one. It is nice that, um, you know how uh, they're Best no longer, forward. <laughs> they're no longer called receptionists. They're called directors of first impressions. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Maverick by the international airport in Salt Lake City is the director of first impressions right. for a lot of foreign butts. Yeah, yeah. First cheek forward or best cheek <laughs> forward, I guess. <laughs> Hey, you deserve the best when it comes to treating yourself. You deserve Thor's chocolate. The best artisan chocolate in East Idaho. It's beyond anything you've tasted before. With bold, smooth, delicious flavors, dark milk and white chocolates, and a few keto options as well. Made from bean to the bar in Idaho Falls. Thor'sChocolate.com. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 25% on your first purchase. 
Thor's chocolate. Fit for the gods. Do you want locally raised beef for the holidays or to feed your family through the winter? Right now, Virgin River Land and Cattle Company is offering 25-pound butcher boxes with steaks, roasts, and ground beef. You can have your very own farm-to-table experience. Find Virgin River Land and Cattle Company on Facebook. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first purchase. And listen later in this episode for how to win front row tickets to a Spud Kings hockey game. Selling your home? Make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. My partner Carly Morgan and I help Idaho buy, sell, and invest in real estate. And we'll help you too. You know we have insight on the Idaho Falls community, and we know the current real estate market too. Plus, we're backed and brokered by the best. Keller Williams Realty, East Idaho. When it's time to sell your home, make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. We'd love to help you. Lincoln Post. Go thrifting for your new fall looks at Elsie's Closet, Upscale Resale. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls' only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. Right now, save on fabulous fall fashions including sweaters, hoodies, cardigans, layering tops, denim, boots, and sneakers. Elsie's Closet. Look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first purchase. It's not just a stop at the thrift, it's a whole vibe. Did you know Idaho Falls Fiber has one local internet service provider? And that's QuickNet, QWK.net. Right now, get QuickNet's Crazy Fast 250 service for $37 a month, or their Crazy Fast gig service for $49 a month. Unlimited data, no setup fee, no term contract, net neutrality, and hometown friendly support. For Idaho Falls Fiber, it's QuickNet. That's QWK.net. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first three months. Get a jump on holiday shopping for your out-of-town family or friends, or maybe just for you. Here's a gift-giving idea. Send them a unique homegrown hometown tee from Teton T-shirts. Including these cool vintage versions of the Civic Auditorium, the West Bank, and the Water Tower, our famous potato sack design, and the classic I Heart IFT. Check out TetonT-shirts.com, link in post. These exclusive designs are not available in gift shops. TetonT-shirts.com, where a real piece of Idaho falls. Last Saturday was the second to the last farmer's market of the season. <sighs> I know, it's so sad to see it go. This They had the fall carnival, mm-hmm. which is always a lot of fun. And this so weekend, cute. Last weekend in October... I know. That means it's the last farmer's market of the season. Oh, it just this kills Saturday. me. It breaks my heart. It really, I know. <laughs> and I'm sorry. It's okay. I need to go more often anyway. Decent weather for it, I think. Mm-hmm. So we've been enjoying unseasonably warm temps. Right. It's been really nice this October until like last week. <laughs> yeah. We broke the seal. Yeah. And now it, it was kind of nice though to clear the air literally. Mm-hmm. So sometimes in these East Idaho summers... We'll get uh, wildfires rarely here, right? But outside of this area that influence our air quality here. Yes, yeah. And you remember two weeks ago, or is it almost three now? Mm-hmm. Mm. When it was the just air quality smoggy. index was just terrible. In fact, mm-hmm. I drove up the East Foothills, and this wasn't even on a bad day, right? And here's a shot, real quick. Of first, you see me shooting toward the east and the windmills, and then slowly panning over. Our little valley here. Mm -hmm. You see that air quality? Right. It's terrible, huh? But then we had a little rain Mm -hmm. last week that cleared it all up almost in an instant. I love rain. Yeah. So that was nice. Super nice. And the last farmer's market of the season this Saturday. Then you may remember a couple of episodes ago, we talked about how they announced they're going to have like basically one a month at the Snake River Event Center. That's the Shiloh Inn. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. Throughout the winter. Yeah. Through, uh, let's see, um, the months that they don't have the summer market. Right. Which is November, December, January, February, March, April. Yeah, for that six months. I'm just so glad they're doing something because mama needs her fix. Yeah. (laughs) Also, you may hear trumpets heralding and millions of voices cheering because the LDS Church has announced that temple garments may soon be sleeveless. Wow. Yeah, big news. It's scandalous. <laughs> it's what, yeah, the secret lives of Mormon wives, yeah. ladies, will love this. <laughs> I guess they're really taking the sun's out, guns out thing seriously now. Mm. 
About time. It's one of, don't get too excited. <laughs> it's one of the redesign options labeled open sleeve. Okay. For garment tops for women and men being tested by the church in hot climates like Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, the Philippines, and some southern U.S. locations. Mm-hmm. So really, it's global warming. Yeah. Is what's <laughs> happening here. Well, and I don't know if you know this, but there are lots of LDS women who actually get yeast infections because of their garments. I did not know that. Because it what? traps, yeah, because it traps in so much heat and moisture, and a lot of the fabric just isn't very breathable, or like the style that they like doesn't come in a fabric that breathes well or something like that. So it can mm. be kind of unfun for some folks. That's a big yikes for me, dog. Yeah, right? But I mean, considering they have to wear a whole extra layer under their clothes, I can see how that could happen. Oh yeah, the um, the the church was asked, "Hey, uh, do we wear our traditional underwear over or under?" And I guess that's personal preference. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I know a lot of folks just wear them as underwear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and by the way, this goes for men's garments too. Mm-hmm. They might get the sleeveless too. Yeah, crazy. I remember when it, it was so tough to date. In the 90s in East Idaho. (laughs) I bet. For two reasons. Mm -hmm. One, for a while, we had Navy guys. Yeah. And you might be wondering, Navy guys? Yeah, they would all, they'd go out to the site and, I don't know, test submarines and, Mm -hmm. you know. And other really cool stuff that we're not allowed to know about. So you were in high school trying to date a high school chick, and she may have been dating a Navy guy. Or if you went up to Rexburg to dance, there was this move. Did you oh, ever hear about this? Uh-uh. There was this slight knuckle scrape against your shoulder to oh, determine to see if you were wearing garments. If you were wearing your G's. That's hilarious. So if you were a Gentile in East Idaho, uh-huh. had a lot of competition <laughs> back in the day. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, it's time for The Rocky Mountain Horror Show. <laughs> Let's start with our outfits. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you the condescending <laughs> question that uh, that hosts ask the kitties. Right, Who right. are holding up the bag saying trick or treat. Yeah, every suburban mom. You are so cute. What are you supposed to be tonight? <laughs> so this is my outfit for my uh, annual witches night out. Mm. Something that a friend of mine puts on. Uh, where basically we go out dressed up as witches and we do little scavenger hunts and have a really nice time. Is this the one where I'm stuck at home? Yep. Uh, uh, it, it's watching your pumpkin soup. Yeah, it's basically a girl's night. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm really excited. I went for more of a woodland vibe this year, you know, with the brown hat and stuff, which was such a pain in the butt to find, by the way. Technically, it's a scarecrow hat, but it's long oh, enough. I, I think you it. can get away with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you actually have a different dress that you're going to be wearing under that uh, bustier yeah. <laughs> corset. What do you call the thing you're wearing over uh, the Yeah, top? I would call it like a corset top. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um... I might wear that dress. I might wear this one. It kind of depends on the weather because the other one is a short dress. Mm. Um, But I do plan on wearing socks with it, so it might be okay. Um, I was actually kind of hoping to make my dress for it, but I just ran out of time. Dang it. And I'm just wearing your standard issue cliche skeleton onesie. (laughs) Which I love, by the way. It actually reminds me a lot of the scene from Donnie Darko, the Halloween scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just throw a hoodie over it and you're good. I feel a little ridiculous as a fully grown man (laughs) wearing essentially a onesie. I kind of get it. <laughs> I actually went to a onesie party way back in the day, and it was supposed to be like kind of a big deal dance party, and it was like kind of piddly, and there were like almost no people. And uh, yeah, you feel a little silly being in public wearing a onesie, but thankfully we can only see your upper half. Well, and I'll so. tell you, I'll tell you how I feel the silliest when I go to pee in this thing. <laughs> oh, you you've know got the, the meme. romper problem. Yes, I've uh-huh. got the romper problem. <laughs> I had to wiggle out the of this. The romp him problem. Uh, yeah. It's not a romp her, it's a romp him. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. Okay, we just came back and we uh, we changed for the show. Uh-huh. We didn't wear this in public. No. But we just came back from Terrifier 3. Yes, we did. <laughs> oh, man. I, my head's still spinning. This has been a pretty movie-heavy week for us. Yes, it has. We saw all three Terrifiers. <laughs> yes, we did. Joker Folly Adieu. Uh-huh. Oh, and we watched one of the Final Destination movies. Apparently, we started, like, in the middle on accident. <laughs> yeah. Funny thing, I've never seen any of them, so... Oh, you haven't? No, so starting in the middle was probably not the move, but realistically, I don't think storyline really matters. Not really. <laughs> You, you get the concept uh, yeah. at the very beginning of the final, spoiler alert, final <laughs> destination movies. Um, 
some characters don't die when they should have. Uh-huh. And then, uh, you know, they come to find out that they are predestined to die. Right. And they can't cheat death. Mm-hmm. And so they die in a myriad of creative ways. Right. Like nobody for a hot minute, for a couple of decades, remembered Rube Goldberg. Yes. But he was a famous cartoonist, I want to say in the 30s and 40s. Right. Who made little machines. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things where the ball starts rolling at the beginning. Right, right. Has to go through a bunch of different... Okay, can you you remember Pee Wee Herman's breakfast machine? I was going to say the cookie making machine from Edward Scissorhands is a good example. Or the one from Casper the Friendly Ghost. Yes. Yeah. That's a Rube Goldberg machine. And they've made sort of a comeback Uh with the Tiki Takis. Right. And the digital animation Mm -hmm. that are sometimes they're musical and they're really fun to watch. They're really neat. But a lot of Rube Goldberg contraption things have to happen coincidentally for the person to die in the Final Destination movies. And I just get a real kick out of that. Yeah, it's fun. (laughs) Uh, Sorry, as we were talking about it, I also thought of the game Mousetrap. Yes. That's kind of a perfect example of one. The actual board game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, uh, if you haven't watched on Hulu, The Toys That Built America yet, you got to watch that. Oh, so good. I love that series. It's just Here delicious. we go, sidebarring again. Right. <laughs> uh, back up to Joker Folly Adieu, which I think is French for The Madness of Two. Yes. Which uh-huh. makes sense, because yeah. they introduce Harley, Harley Quinn. Quinn. Mm-hmm. Played by Lady Gaga. And I guess I forgot how slow and dramatic the first <laughs> one was, because the second one is no different. Right. Maybe the Marvel Cinematic Universe has spoiled me a little bit and I was expecting nonstop action, but it's the exact opposite of that. As someone who hates that so many superhero movies are just formulaic and predictable and just like one explosion after the other, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And I I am kind of shocked that it got such piddly reviews Mm -hmm. because I actually thought it was really well done. I thought it stayed so true to the original Joker You know, and I know that I'm actually kind of, I'm totally eating my words here, okay? Because I know that I said in the last episode, I don't see how they're going to do this with with Arthur Fleck's character. They did it beautifully. It was exactly what you'd expect, you know, and I like- How them words taste. Oh, honestly, (laughs) I'm willing to eat it because I really enjoyed it. Also, considering I love musical theater, I did like the little musical fantasy sequences. I thought they were a blast. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. wanted to see some action, man. I I wanted to see the Joker it. knock over a bank or something. But that's not who Arthur Fleck is either. I wonder if there's going to be a third one. I kind of wonder too. And if there is a third one, I wonder if he's going to battle the Batman. I mean, it'd kind of be about time, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, considering all we've seen is little baby Bruce Wayne. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but Who's yeah. the guy from Twilight? Edward from Twilight. Uh, that is Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Yeah. I want to see them go head to head. Which I love him as Batman, by the way. I yeah. think he just gets it. All right. <laughs> anyway, I really loved it. I think that if you're looking for a you know, comic book based drama, not necessarily a comic book drama, but one that's based on a comic In book. In that world. Yeah. I think that it's really good. If you liked the original Joker, I think you'll like this, but don't go into it thinking that it's a comic book movie because it's not really a comic book movie. Here's another complaint I have about uh, the second Joker. What the hell year is it? And let me explain, (laughs) because I have this same complaint about Terrifier 3. Yes. The costumes look like late 70s, early 80s, maybe, Mm -hmm. Um, but there's like smartphones and stuff. So in Terrifier there are, but in Joker it is act- it is absolutely set in the eighties, I believe. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Late seventies, early eighties. Because the that honestly, one the tech matches. Yeah, the late seventies or mm-hmm. the seventies carried into the eighties by a couple of years. Right. And the eighties carried into the nineties by more than a couple of years. Right. I think at least until ninety five. Yeah, I would agree. Maybe even ninety six. Yeah. So I guess we've made the segue to Terrifier three. Yes. I just have to say. <laughs> I just love Art the Clown. (laughs) And by love, I mean I recognize and now respect him (laughs) as a member of the pantheon of horror film franchise figureheads. Right, right. Like, you know, Freddy Mm Krueger, Mike Myers, Jason, Pinhead, Ghostface. Yeah. Chucky. Pennywise. Pennywise. Well, okay, Pennywise would be in a different category, which I also recognize Art the Clown is now a member. Yeah, the scary clown category. The killer clown category. Also a good one. Like the killer clowns from outer space, Mm -hmm. clown, Mm -hmm. uh, Art the Clown, Pennywise, 
Um, I don't know, John Wayne Gacy, Ronald McDonald, wherever. You, <laughs> <laughs> you think they're going to do a Steamboat Willie to Ronald McDonald once he hits the public domain? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it could happen. Uh, Bruce, the shark mm-hmm. from Finding Nemo. No, did yeah. you did you oh, know that's... Oh, I guess that's... it's Screamboat, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Did you know uh, the Jaws shark is called Bruce? Oh. And that's why the shark in Finding Nemo is... Oh. Bruce the shark. That's actually kind of cute. I love that. One thing I love about Art the Clown, though, is the actor had, he's got a three name name. I forget his name. <laughs> David some Mark and Chapin. No. It's like a Danny McGuffin Guffin. That's the guy that <laughs> shot John Lennon. Anyway, um, <clears throat> but uh, he, he must have gone to mime school or studied mimes. Something. Because his body language is incredible. One of the things that I think makes Art the Clown so scary is he doesn't talk. Right. Yeah, and that's the thing. It is so much harder. Keep that, you guys. Right, right. Well, and I think it's a little harder to be scary if you have lines. Yes. You know? Exactly. And so all he does is nonverbal communication, Mm -hmm. and the actor is so good at it. He's really good. It's so scary. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that the actor that plays him in the movies isn't the same that played him in the shorts that predate the movies, Yeah, which we haven't seen yet, so we might... We might have to do a little update on that next time. Do a little YouTube and Yeah, well, and I kind of want to come. You know what? It would be kind of fun to compare Art the Clowns. It would be. Yeah. But yeah, he is just terrifying. Now, the movie was campy. The yeah. acting in the third one, not as bad as the first two. Uh, they totally sent their actors to acting camp, and I'm very impressed. They did a good job. It's nice to see that. And also, yeah. what the hell year was it? They all have smartphones mm-hmm. and trucks that right. are modern, mm-hmm. but it looks like it's from... Somewhere in the early to mid 80s. Right. Well, and I will say, I do think that there's a lot of like... um, Even the film grain and the cheesy synthesizer soundtrack. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think that horror really peaked in the 80s and became kind of a big... um, it jo- became a big genre. And so I think that we Halloween, sort of... Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. Right, Absolutely, right. Yeah. Well, and even look at Stranger Things. Obviously not made in the 80s, but placed in the 80s. I think that people just sort of connect the two. Yeah, I almost wonder if they were going for a Stranger Things vibe in Terrifier 3. It wouldn't surprise me, honestly. Yeah. That and also I think that they like that... Like, I think that horror in general likes to sort of um, pull from nostalgia a little bit. Okay. To sort of... Um, give a false sense of security. <laughs> so they give you lots of familiar imagery so that when it's completely ruined by whatever evil character they've created, it feels more devastating. Hey, senorita, that's astute. Thank you. Two people will get that. My big thing with Terrifier is realistically, the story is not that great, but it's not, you're not there for the story. You're not, you're there for the slasher, mm-hmm. you know, and the practical effects are fantastic. It's slash tastic. Yeah. If yeah. you want a good old slasher film romp, mm-hmm. and I'm kind of glad they're bringing that genre back a little bit. Yeah. You know what absolutely killed? And, and so I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to revisit what killed the slasher genre for me. Mm-hmm. I swore them off forever. Mm. I, obviously not. But was Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. Have yeah. you ever seen that? No, I've heard that it's too much. Speaking of Killer Clowns, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Captain Spaulding, I want to say. Mm-hmm. The guy that plays him in that and I want to say the sequel. But it was just, I it was a rental and I had to just sort of disassociate half an hour in. I was like, right. it's too much. And and I, by the way, I thought, speaking of that, thinking mm-hmm. about, speaking of it being too much, I did some, see some really creative marketing for Terrifier 3. Really? Yes. Like the typical, and I was sort of reminded of, Oh, this is what they say about slasher films, like people right. puking in the aisles. There was that rumor. Yeah. And uh, somebody had to leave, you know, three minutes into the film because they were having a panic attack. Right. That kind of urban legend stuff that's unverifiable and probably didn't happen or it happened to a friend of a friend, wink, wink. Right, right. But the most creative pre-marketing for Terrifier 3 I saw is is a simple um, photo of somebody's Apple Watch. Right. And their heartbeat was through the roof. Yeah. You know, they probably had just gone on a workout or something. Probably or something. Yeah. Yeah. But there was a popcorn bucket in the background, I want to say. And mm-hmm. I thought, that's gold. Yeah. I mean, genuinely. That's a 2024 way of saying. Well, especially because it feels like fact. <laughs> yes. You right. know, it feels so undeniable. Uh huh. Yeah. But realistically, it could be faked. But yeah, I thought it was 
fun and campy. There yeah. were definitely a couple of parts that were uncomfy and kind of hard to watch. I mean, how many times did I go, whoa, ooh? Yeah, I mean, I... Two or three times. Yeah, there were quite a few. And especially having it on the big screen, it was kind of a <laughs> lot to take in, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another complaint I have about Terrifier 3, which isn't really a complaint about the film itself. It's a complaint about Google, specifically autocomplete. And here's right. another spoiler <laughs> if you want to hit plus 30 on your podcast app. So I went to Google Terrifier 3 show times. Right. And when I got past the word show. Uh-huh. The autocomplete said Terrifier 3 shower scene. And I'm like, oh, great. Right. There's going to be a shower scene. Yeah. Which, I mean, and also. And there is. Well, and also, as someone who wasn't spoiled, as soon as I saw the shower scene, I was like, oh, as I know what's going to happen. As soon as you saw like, the shower stall, as soon as you see that in a horror movie, right, right. you know what's going to happen. It's a slasher fi- flick. That's like the rule. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Alfred Hitchcock is turning over in his grave. <laughs> Well, and frankly, that one's kind of a two for one, too, because they're in the shower and they're f***ing, and those are two things that get you killed in a horror movie. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ready for treat time. I sure am. I've been really looking forward to these. Tip of the hat to Whitney before we get to treats. <laughs> we uh, and, and you'll understand the segue here in just a second. We want to get to our Virgin River Land and Cattle Company super cool promotion we're doing. Yes, I'm I'm really excited for this one. It was all their idea. Do you remember our uh, amazement earlier this year? Mm-hmm. We were invited to a Spud Kings hockey game and we sat front row. How could I forget it? It was Lane an amazing moment. And Whitney Virgin from Virgin River Land and Cattle Company. Right. I'm not a sports fan. Me either. I could give two shits. <laughs> But being front row oh. at this game was the most, into- I think I said something like it's the uh, best workout I've ever had sitting down. Yeah. It's just yeah. an incredible experience. And it's not just front row. It's front row right behind the goal. Oh, it's amazing, dude. Here's the thing. Like I said, we're not into sports, but this is just transcendent. You know, it's so immersive. It's just cool, dude. So this was all Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company's idea. They're inviting you to sit front row at a Spud Kings hockey game on Friday, November 8th, along with Lane, Whitney, and us, Mike and Carly. We're going to put you, we're going to sandwich you right in the middle. Yep. It's going to be fun for everyone. It's going to be a bliggity blast. <laughs> now, it's, it's them and a friend, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so you and a buddy. Two people mm-hmm. right in between us. Yeah. For a Spud Kings hockey game Friday, November 8th. And here's how it's going to work. There's only one way to reliably contact us in the first place. Right. And that's our email address, info at ifafpod.com. Right. That's info at ifafpod.com. Dot com. So you need to email. We're going to have before the game, we've got three episodes before the game. We're going to have three code words. Mm-hmm. Here's the first one. Filet. Mm-hmm. You know That's how to Mike's spell favorite. filet, right? <laughs> As in filet mignon, F-I-L-E-T. Mm-hmm. Don't forget the T. That's the only way to be in the drawing. If you listen to all three episodes, you can get three entries. Mm-hmm. If you only listen to this one, you only get one entry. <laughs> Okay, got it? Yeah. Uh, clear as mud? So all you do is send an email that says filet to ifafpod.com. Mm-hmm. That's it. Easy. The reason we bring that up now is it was Whitney. Yes. Who clued us into, after we talked about the Kit Kat ghost tracks. Mm-hmm. Ghost, ghost toast. Ghost toast. <laughs> You're conflating the two. You're now good. I'm getting, this is werewolf tracks. Yes, yeah. She said, hey guys, have you tried these? We said, no. <laughs> but we're gonna. <laughs> now we're gonna. Yeah. And I'm so excited because Reese's is one of my favorite kind of snacks. Right. Like, I think you've noticed in our very movie heavy week that my go-to movie candy is specifically Reese's Pieces. Yeah. Now, I like a good Reese's peanut butter cup, but those ones, they're just so good because I like to hold them in my mouth till they get really, really warm and then <laughs> crush them. And then they're all gooey inside. A oh. burst of peanut buttery chocolate Just flavor. fantastic. And can you read the front of the bag? Can Can you describe? Well, yes, I can. What the how the bag describes these werewolf tracks? So they are milk chocolate with a vanilla flavored cream. So okay. I have to assume that this is sort of going to be like a milk chocolate white chocolate duo with a nice little thing of peanut butter in the middle. Yeah, the top is white chocolate. It's a nice little full moon. 
which you love. I love As we discussed last episode. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, look at that. So it's a Reese's peanut butter cup, Mm -hmm. half white chocolate, half milk chocolate. Go. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) How can you be upset? It's beautiful. That's nice. You know, this is the perfect one for people who can't decide if they want a white chocolate or a milk chocolate one. At first blush, I am hard-pressed to describe how it tastes any different from a regular Reese's peanut butter cup. Mm. So I'm going to turn it upside down Mm -hmm. and let the white chocolate part hit my taste buds first. Yep. That's exactly what I did, too. Sushi style. (laughs) Mm. Mm. It's sort of like flipping a coin. So basically, you taste whether you're getting a, you flip it, and you see if you're getting a milk chocolate or a white chocolate one. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, those are phenomenal. I love them. <laughs> I'm going to do another one totally upside mm-hmm. down. Do it. Why not? See where that gets me. Mm-hmm. Well, and I just love Reese's peanut butter. It's got a different flavor to it, and it's so dang good. And I've been on a huge peanut butter kick lately, mostly for Reese's peanut butter. It's just mm-hmm. better. And mad props to them for constantly reinventing. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like the Reese's pumpkin, the mm. Reese's Christmas tree. So cute. The Reese's egg at mm-hmm. Easter. Yeah, and they've got jack o' lanterns and they are doing ghosts now too. Are for they? the white chocolate ones, which makes so much more sense. Okay, that second one, I got a little bit more of the white chocolate mm-hmm. feel. Yeah. Which I'm not a huge fan of, mm-hmm. but in this case, it sort of adds to the creaminess of the milk chocolate. I think so. It's I think like it's having good. a Reese's peanut butter cup with maybe a little glass of milk. I could see that. Well, and I think it's interesting that they call it vanilla flavored cream. I have to assume it's because it doesn't meet the standard to be called chocolate. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not mad about it because honestly, it's delicious. I'd steal these out of my kids' collection on (laughs) on Halloween night. Forget the Switch Witch. I'm just taking them. You won't even know. (laughs) They'll probably be one of the few candies they chose to keep and I'm still taking them. I don't care. Oh, you ate those, honey. What do you mean? <laughs> Me gusto. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, a couple more things before we go. We doubled up on our Halloween attractions. We sure did. This week, because we know it's the last weekend before Halloween coming up. Wanted to make sure you had as much info as we could give you. Right. Uh, we looked into haunted car washes. Yes. Uh-huh. And we got, uh, okay, fire hose on 17th is good. Mm-hmm. Um, Pony, Pony Express and Pony Express. Ammon, uh-huh. right? There's always a line for that one. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. When they do that. But the message we got was that's mostly for kids. Oh, well, yeah. And I don't want to spend 15, 20 bucks on a car wash. Now, I will say, I feel like in general, spook houses are mostly for kids. Right. Don't get me wrong. Love them. I think mm-hmm. they're a good time and total romp. But realistically, you get to a certain age and you can just walk through that and it's fine. So we went to, we did the family friendly, you pick Red Barn, and then Mm -hmm. we did the close to home Theater of the Lost Souls and Shelley. Yes. You pick Red Barn. We just got some great footage and want to show you this. What an idyllic family fall festival type atmosphere they've got going on. Super cute. Yeah. And their uh, pumpkin chucking looks ridiculously fun. Yeah. Okay. Look at this. You get small little pumpkins. (laughs) Right. Fire them through a cannon at these targets. Mm hmm. And they make a cool noise. I do kind of want to know what they've got against Bugs Bunny. I don't know if you saw, but <laughs> was he that was one of the targets. It was one of the targets. Like the other, all of the others were normal animals, and then there's just bugs. And I'm like, what did he do? <laughs> Warner Brothers and Looney Tunes approved, I'm sure. <laughs> right. But they had a slide. They had little bouncy things for the kids. Oh, yeah. Those things were cool. There was the smell of fresh baked pizza in the air. Mm-hmm. And I think donuts, too. There was I, I yes. could have sworn I smelled donuts. I don't know where they came from, but it smelled really good. Pretty sure. And, and then, of course, the area where you get to take the selfies. We had Rango with us. And here's Carly and Rango on the hay bales with mm-hmm. the pumpkins. Yeah, he just rode around in my basket. It was actually really cute. He seemed like he was having a good time. And then here's my version of a cheesy hay bale (laughs) pumpkin shot. I I, thought that was cute. I was going for, do you follow, what's his name? Chris Munch comedy on Instagram? I don't think I do. He does this kind of. It's fall, y'all. Super cringy, (laughs) looking straight at the camera uh, as if it's a video on a dating site. Oh, oh, that guy. And he talks about his mother and how she'll really (laughs) like you. 
right. and how we can go to the fall festival together. Anyway, uh-huh. but I didn't realize this. When my head is down and, my, and I'm looking up and my eyebrows, they do this weird, almost sinister looking thing. I need to be careful Maybe a about Jack Nicholson-y. <laughs> making that expression. It scared me a little bit. <laughs> you get those murder eyes. <laughs> Yikes. Anyway, we just went through the attraction area to get to the pumpkin selection. They have yeah. orange pumpkins mm-hmm. and white pumpkins and red pumpkins. Well, we were just looking around, really. Like, I haven't been there for almost a decade. And when I went, it was just a pumpkin patch. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but they've really plussed it with the train and everything. Yeah, it's Are you so kidding? cute now. Then on Thursday, mm-hmm. when it got cold and chilly, and it was actually raining that day. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. And I had never been to the Theater of the Lost Souls. And Shelly, there's really Theater of the Lost Souls and Hospital of the Lost Souls. And mm-hmm. you might be asking yourself, well, where in Shelly? Oh, my sweet summer child. <laughs> you just go to Shelly. Yeah, you can't miss it. It's right there. It's right next to the park where they had spud days. You know how people it's, say- It's just right there. Yeah, you know how people say, oh, you can't miss it, and then you totally miss it? Uh-huh. You really can't miss it. You can't, you can't miss it. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you think? I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun. I think that it's got some really interesting uh, bits to it that I think do sort of separate it from a regular spook house. I did notice that they did definitely hit on a lot of the like, you know, big rooms that you tend to get in in scary house, like in a uh, scare houses, mm-hmm. like um the arachnophobia room, the clown room, the doll room, that kind of stuff. Uh, there was one part that did freak me out. Uh-huh. And I was really impressed because, you know, there's only so much that someone screaming in your face will scare you. Yes. But at one point, we had to crawl through this like very dark little space, which I didn't like already. So Carly decides to do the crab walk, meaning feet forward. Well, because it was sort of like a ledge, and I was kind of hoping to like just sort of stand and crouch. But I was about to go, like I was about to put my feet forward so I could go down. And um, right then, the scarer in that room, they didn't scream. They didn't really make a noise. They just ran up that little hallway toward me. And that sound was enough that I ended up, I did end up crab walking backwards to you because I was like, there's no way in hell I'm facing this alone. <laughs> now that I was unaware that this was happening because you sort of, there's a hairpin turn and I was still, <laughs> yeah, you were still in the right hallway in the hallway before. Uh huh. So I turned the corner to be greeted by Carly <laughs> doing the crab walk backwards <laughs> to me. <laughs> Which yeah. was the scariest part of the whole thing for me. That's hilarious. I didn't realize that I'd scared you. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because I when was When you really... see the person that's supposed to be normal <laughs> acting scary, it's sort of like in The Exorcist when they're crawling on the wall, you know? Right, right. That's fair. Or that's on the fair. ceiling. See, and I was just looking for a little comfort. <laughs> uh, there, there was another funny moment for me where... We walked into a room, Mm -hmm. and I was like, that is a smell from my childhood. It totally smells like vroom. I was like, oh, yes, a (laughs) two-stroke chainsaw in the garage. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. I walked into that room, smelled it, and walked a little (laughs) faster so I could get to the exit before the guy came out. Mm -hmm. You were trailing just a little behind me, and he got you instead. (laughs) And I was like literally out the door when I heard it going, and I didn't even look back. I will say, I kind of wish I could see it without all of the spook house stuff in it. Like, I just want to see the old theater, Mm -hmm. because I love old buildings like that. And honestly, there's there's a part of my soul that hurt a little seeing it turned into that, because I was like, oh, I want it to just be refurbished into a pretty movie theater. And I'll say it's not just a walkthrough. It It, it is a little physical. Like you have yes. to duck in a couple of places. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There are parts that are completely dark and you kind of have to feel your way around yeah. through a couple places. I was really glad that for once I didn't wear a dress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. You didn't. <laughs> yeah. And then you get to jump in a coffin and go down a slide. It's fun. It was actually really fun. And the scariest part of the whole thing was uh, the fact that they were out of hand sanitizer at the end of that. Oh, I know. That was terrifying. You know, there was another... Actually, I think the scariest room was that one with the mirrors. Those two schmoes in there were scary. Did you see them? At least one of them was extremely frightening. Yeah. Yeah. My goodness. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, and speaking of haunted attractions, you know, we've talked about how Idaho Falls this year Mm -hmm. doesn't have one. Right, right. Dr. Slaughter's became Planet Doom. Mm -hmm. And then Dare said, no, we're good. Yeah, which bummer. And I don't know if that's because... um, Congratulations to drugs for winning the war on drugs. <laughs> I'm kidding. Could be. <laughs> kind of. But but this is but this is good to know. Even though drugs war, won the war on drugs uh-huh. and Dare decided not to do a haunted house anymore, <laughs> you'll be pleased to know that um, 
Planet Doom will soon become Out West Bible Church. Because we need more churches in this town. So ultimately, just, well, ki- just kidding. We do need a little more variety. And ultimately, <laughs> so uh, uh, good triumphs over evil. Right, right. <laughs> That's the way I look they at it. They beat back Satan with a stick. <laughs> So I know that we talked about treasures back in the day and how that's one of the several haunted shops downtown. I actually at the time wanted to talk about another shop down there during the same episode, but I did decide to split the two up because I think it's worth it and they're kind of fun that way. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, I actually wanted to talk about Elsie's Closet today. Yes. Now, we know the owner, Natalie. We went with her to Rose Hill Cemetery, and she knocked on the knocking grave, yes. brave soul. Yeah. To be fair, Natalie is one of... She's basically been my like go-to ghost expert. She knows all of the lore around town. She's very knowledgeable on some of the supernatural happenings of Idaho Falls. So, of course, I had to turn to her when I was putting these bits together, and she happened to talk about some of the things that she's been experiencing since she took over... Well, since she you know, made Elsie's closet. Well, and I actually asked her, are you sure you want uh, people to know (laughs) that uh, it's haunted? And she's like, oh yeah. Right, right. So, (laughs) Well, and realistically, those buildings down there are so old, it's kind of more surprising when they're not haunted. Okay, yeah. You know, Uh (laughs) kind of like a theater. Every good theater has a ghost. Uh So she's had a couple of really freaky things happen there. Now, in general, she gets like some of the like sounds and like vibes and stuff from upstairs. Uh, But she's actually had a couple of things happen that were pretty big and kind of undeniable. Okay. So uh, she actually has a skeptic friend that uh, helps her out there at the shop sometimes. Uh, Now, her skeptic friend actually heard a lady laughing upstairs and basically like went to her and said, there's something up there, which she wouldn't usually do because she doesn't believe in ghosts or anything. So you wouldn't think that she'd acknowledge it that way. Mm -hmm. And then one day, the two of them were in the back part of the store. So if you've ever been in there, there's like the main shopping area. And now there's a separate back shopping area past the register, kind of near the dressing room. And they heard this like weird muffled voice that almost sounded like it was coming from an intercom but it was in the office area. They went in, investigated, found nothing. Uh, They could even hear it when they were in there, couldn't find where it was coming from or anything like that. And they were like, okay, we're gone, we're gone. And the fact that they heard it together too, I think is something. That same day after they'd heard all that, Natalie was standing behind the register with her friend still there. Her friend was like, I think, hanging up clothes or something and saw this happen. But she was standing at the register and the garland on the uh, mirror that sits behind the register flew off of it and hit her in the back. Wow. Which like, there's a good amount of space between the two. It almost sounds like- It's not like like it just rolled off onto the floor. Like it was, like there was some footage. I'm going to need some updates. Yeah. I want to cuz it almost sounds like the the activity is progressing. But I look forward to an update yeah. uh next Halloween if not sooner. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our show. Sleep tight. Mm-hmm. Sweet dreams. <laughs> And uh, make sure you subscribe. There's actually a link in the post that will automatically subscribe you to our YouTube. And we are super duper close to 500. So it'd be really cool if you did. We're like 14 away. So think if you've just subscribed on uh, not only YouTube, but followed us on Facebook, even Instagram, Mm -hmm. we're climbing a little bit. We love to see that. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for being here on IFAF. Right. Oh, and we also just made a Reddit too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for taking care of that. You got it. See you next week. Mm -hmm. Have a great fall. See you next fall? No. What's the line? Okay. Have a great trip. See you next fall. (laughs) There you go. Stay fresh cheese bags. (laughs) 